Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's your girl Didi. And if you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to like, share, comment and hit the notification bell. So you'll be the first person to be notified once I drop any video. So today's class, I'll be teaching you all variable and variable declaration and assignment. So in it, I'll be teaching you all also print F and scan F, which are the input and output. And the last but not the least, which is something I want you all to pay attention to, is how to generate a random number. Okay, so I'll be teaching you all these three topics in this video and I want you all to pay attention to it. So in our last class, I taught you all you need to know about data types and C, in which I taught you the classification, the modifiers, size of data types, signed and unsigned, and how to calculate the median range of every data type, both the signed and unsigned. I mean, the 0 to 255, how did they get 0 to 255, how did they get minus this to this? I taught it in this video. To get the link, click on my description and click on the link I dropped there and you watch the video to so be able to understand it very well. So make sure you like, comment, hit the notification bell and don't forget to subscribe, share this video. So in C programming, variable declaration and assignment are separate steps. So we go through each of them. So let's go back to variable declaration. Variable declaration. So let me stop there. Declaration. Now, in C variable declaration, it involves specifying data types and the name of the variable. Okay, I taught data type in our last class, which I say there are different types of, there are four, right? There are lots. We have four major types. We have the int, the float, the char, and we have the double. Okay? Okay, now, so it involves data type, data, our data type, type, then variable name, variable name. Okay, so if you want to declare your data type, for instance, I write int a, semicolon, char, dd, semicolon. You have the float also, float, dd. So these are the best ways to declare a variable. We have int, right? We have int. And I want to declare a variable name. I cannot write hello. Now give space and write word as a as, as a variable name. It's wrong, very wrong. I can use int name. Semicolon. Don't forget your semicolon. This is correct. I can use int name underscore person. This is also correct. Do you understand? So these are the two ways I would advise you to declare your variable. The next thing I want to talk about is variable assignment in C. So once a variable is declared, you can assign a value to it using the assignment operator equal to. Do you understand? So what it means is once you assign a value to a variable that you've declared, it's, done, it's called variable assignment. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is once we have something like I declared int A, right? And I assign it 10. So it means I've assigned 10 to int A. I do not assign int A to 10. Do you understand? I assigned 10 to int a. That's what it means. So if I have something like char b is equals to remember how I taught you all how to okay, how to declare a char. I can just write a head shape. I've declared this. Do you understand? I can also do this clear char a. Right? And I'll come over here, right? A is equal to 10. Do you understand? I can either write it this way or I write it the other way. So that's how to assign value to your variable. So an example of what I just explained, what I taught you about how to write a code in C, right? So the first thing we're going to do is our header, file, hashtag include stdio because it wants to work with input output, right? So that being written, we want to write it again, something else again, which is what? Our main, right? Int main. Bracket void. Don't forget your curly brackets. Do you understand? Now, here we're going to now declare our variables. You have int a is equal to 10. Right? You can write int dd is equal to 20. You can write float b is equal to 1.45. Right? You can write double c is equal to Remember what I told, taught you about the difference between double and float? 45. When I have one decimal, like 1.45, 1 points, right? It floats. If I have 12 points, 22 points, 13 points, name it, 90 points, that's double. Do you understand? Now, I can declare my char. Char, let's use underscore name, go name. You call to. Sorry, sure. H. 
we've declared and we've assigned. Do you understand? We've declared and we've assigned. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to print out. I'll do print F bracket A equal to. Remember what I taught you all about the specifier? Our uh, specifier. If you yet to understand specifier, I advise you to check my last video to understand everything about specifier. Okay, A. So I'm going to explain to you the difference between the A in my quote and the A outside the quote. Now, the A inside the quote is just like a normal letter to it. Do you understand? Like writing, hello, hi, how are you? That's how C says it. Do you understand? Then, equal is not seen as an operator here. Do you understand? But the percentage D, which is the specifier, is the value of A that is outside the quote. If I put C here now, right? C equal to then I put in the specifier. It will give me the value of the specifier. Do you understand? So the, the work of the A outside is more like it's calling the, 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 the value that is assigned to it. Okay, so this is the code right now you want to work with, right? Now, I'm going to run this code. I guess you are able to understand this code right now. So I print, the print F is the D equals to percentage of D. Okay, the slash N I wrote here is for new line because I need a new line. If I don't want new line, I'll just, if I don't want it to be in a separate line, I'll just remove this new line and it should all be together and it should be clustered. Do you understand? For a neat code, you just have to put in your side. It will look neat and perfect and lovely. Now, the next thing again, if you notice that my last char go dot dash n, underscore n, sorry, I use double quotes, which is not how to declare a char. You use a single quote to declare a char. A standard method of declaring a char is a single quote. Do you understand? Now, I'm going to run this. You see, my a is equal to zero. My a is equal to 10, sorry. Um, DD is 345B. If you notice, my code run perfectly. Now, I want to, like, hint on something. If you notice here right now, where I... I wanted my chart to work like where I, where I printed my char. I wrote print f go name is equal to the I put the specifier for my char. I use double specifier, right? I wrote the one for decimal and the one for for the normal value. Do you understand? Okay, now what this is going to do? The first one is going to call the value of h, right? Now it will not check the specifier. The, speci the specifier is percent a decimal. That means it requires a number. You remember when I explained the h i i of a code, right? Okay, so what you're going to do is we're going to then print out the a s c i i of capital h, right? Now, specifier for C is just the normal um, char specifier, character specifier. So it's going to write the value of C, which is H. This is the difference. One will look for the value of C as a char, while the other one will look for the SCI of H. That's just the difference between the two. Now, that's why we have 72, or that's why we have H. If you notice, we're having A equal to 10. We're not having 10 is equal to 10. That means our specifier does not see a D, D, B, or C as anything. It sees it as a normal letter. Do you understand? But the one outside, it's what it's, it sees as what it looks at, because that's what calls the value. That is being registered in, in specifier. Let me put it that way. Okay. So now I'm going to go over to print F and scan F. I'm going to explain print F and scan F. So having a very variable, variable declaration and variable assignment. The next thing I want to explain is the standard input and output, which are the print F and scan F. Now I'm going to, I want us to read through this. Now in C programming, print F is one of the main output function, right? The function sends formatted output to the screen. For example, I'm going to show you guys how this works now. Now, all valid C programs must contain the main function, which I've explained before. So the code execution, the code starts working, executing or anything from main c function once you write int main void main you have told the code you are telling compiler hello now the, the compiler is like listening that's where you start from do you understand now the next thing is the print f is a library function to send formatted output to the screen do you understand it's used to send formatted output to the screen now the next one to use print f in our program we must use the include stdio.h file which is stand which is the header file remember now return zero statements inside the main function is the exit status of this program that's why i always said make sure you use your return statements do you understand now this is an example of what I just explained now. The first thing you're going to do is include stdio.h. Then your int main. This is where it starts executing. Then your curly brackets. Make sure you just add this curly bracket. Then this is your code. Int test int equals to 5. Okay, I'm going to run this code now. Okay, so you guys remember what I taught you all about variable declaration here and assignments. You can see I assigned 5 to test int int, which is a data type int, right? Right? And make sure. We indent. Okay, this is we're going to run this code. The number is five. Do you understand? So we use print f to print out our result. It showcases the result to the screen. Remember, using your specifier, you must always add your specifier. You must always add the specifier. If I say something like this now, if I remove this thing here now, I replace this with a six. Right? This is what happened. Okay. If I replace with hello, this is what happens. But if I replace, even if I write anything, it's just going to be writing whatever. Even if I put this 5, it's going to write this 5. But bear in mind that the 5 you wrote is not the one you assigned to it. Do you understand? If I write 45.6, it's going to write. Because it's not seen as a, it's not seen as a double. Do you understand? Now, 
but if i put in my specifier and run it it's running this five as the assigned value of test integer now if i reuse float you watch it don't work do you see because i do not even call a variable i do not declare a variable floats i do not assign a variable floats so it won't work do you get so if i want this to work i need to do this to change this int here to floats and then just to five points zero and i'll run it so this kind f is normally used if you want to interact with the user you want the user to be the one to put in the information you want to ask the user for an information for like this example here we have print f enter your age so the first thing the computer is going to do is remember this print f is an output function right now it's going to first write in enter your age now you will put in the age yourself you're going to be the one to assign your age to this dig uh, variable that we declared here int age do you understand now the work of scan f here is it's going to take that age that you put in and register it to the address of this your variable i don't know if you guys understand now if i write 15 hmm, your specifier will take in the 15 and save it to age the address age the and here is used to, the, to, to represent address do you understand it will save it to age then it will not print it out here you are then the age you printed so it's just going to accept whatever the user put in save it to age then run it using the printf you are what you you put in that was saved to the age will not be here in the specifier then years old so let's this in this example the program prompts the user to enter their age right the scan f function is used to read an integer value from the user okay that's what i explained it to take in what you put in like the first thing i'm going to show enter your age the user enters 10 the scan f reads 10 and it will not store that 10 in age now it's not print it, print it out you are 10 years old and why that 10 is printing out because of the variable you have declared after your this comma which is the age yeah you understand then the and operator is used to pass the memory address of the age variable to the scan f do you understand finally the program displays, displays the uh, entered age using printf i'm going to run this code so you guys understand it very well okay now i'm going to run this code right now right i'll click on run enter your age you are 56 years old if i run it again enter your age you are 45 years old now if you notice it's not going to write scan f something 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 here that's what i was explaining now if i write something like int high here for instance and i pass in high maybe high here just imagine just what's going to happen and i run this code enter your age 45 you are zero years old do you understand what's going on here now yeah because he's not receiving anything you understand until i put in this age here now if i want this variable to understand what high is i just have to just save this here high enter your age 56 you are 56 years old do we understand now the work of everything here the print f is the output function this scan f is the input function you use print f it's right enter your age right which happened here i wrote in 56 scan f is going to take in this remember the specifier if i change the specifier to maybe something like let me use c i run this and i write 58 4 sorry and i write 54 45 sorry and i run this code you're 52 years old do you see what's going on does you understand what's going on hey, that's why you have to use the d here because you're running integer Int f when i write enter your age i'll put in my age right then the scan f okay specify you take it as a decimal which is a number and save it to the address high so that anytime i call it with another print f or in any other function it will come out but make sure that your scan f and print f rhymes the variable your scan f and the variable your print f rhymes do you understand okay okay i'm going to show you guys something let me use 1.56 and run you notice only picked one so tell me why i do not print 1.56 on my comment section okay so this is my notes in case if you need this my note, let me know if you're an ALS student you can just test me on slack and i will drop the notes for you i've explained to you guys everything you need to know about char right so i want us to use this char so i guess you understand it better so we declare the variable char enter a character right it's kind of the same thing you need to put take in the character you put in and then save it to say char then let's run this code enter a character remember we're talking about a character and not a name what happened here is that it searched for the asii value of the letter h the capital letter h do you understand and it discarded the many ones so let me show you the asi value that is 72 here look for decimal that is 72 in our decimal is capital letter h right so that's everything i need to explain about printf and scanf hope you understand so the next thing i want to talk about is how to generate random numbers okay when we talk about random numbers we're talking about we have two functions i want you guys to remember we have the rand 
and we have this round. Don't mind the way I pronounce it, S round. So in C programming language, the round function is a library function that generates the random number in the range zero to the maximum, the round maximum. Now, when we use the round function in a program, we need to implement the ST lead. We need to use this library. Dot H. Don't forget, we need to use this library. Because round function is defined in this library. In this header file. Okay, if I want to generate a random number now, right? And I use this function. It's going to just generate. The random number is 87. 87. It's going to print 87. If I run this code 10 times, it's going to keep representing 87, 87, 87, 87. I use this around here and I run and I put my seed, which is the time I want it to run. If the code, if it's, it's 87, that's the random number. If I run the code again, it's going to give me 90. If I run the code again, it might give me maybe 885. If I run the code again, it might give me 1000. It might even give me millions of numbers. Do you understand? But with just the round, it's just going to give me one random number if, even if I keep repeating the code, even if I keep running the code. I don't know if you guys understand. So to explain this further, I'm going to be running a code right now so you guys understand what I'm explaining very well. Okay, so we've written this code now and I want to run this code, right? Don't forget what I explained about the header file. You'll be including, since we're working with printf, which is the standard input and output, we're working with include stdio.h. And now we're working with a rad, rad function, which is in stdio.h file, right? So that's why we're including the two header files. Now if I run this code, I want you to pay attention to the numbers that this code generated, right? I'm going to run it again. Pay attention to the numbers generated. I'm going to run it again. You see, the numbers do not change. So that's where run. That's what when we use run. If I want to run a code that I don't want random number to change, I'll just use this run. Do you understand? So to generate a random number in C, use this run function from the standard library. Library, sorry. However, to produce different sequence of random number each time the program run, that's when you use the S run. If you want to produce different sequence of random numbers each time the program runs, so I'm going to be. So I'm going to explain this code one after the other. Now remember what I explained about the two header files we have. Our int main which is correct now we declared a variable int random equal to rand right if i want I, I can choose not to declare and just write to rand here rand the code will run do you understand if i want i can just put in my random and declare it here the code will still run okay so that you understand that it's not much i can i can choose to declare it i can choose not to declare it do you understand now i declared a variable int random equals to rand now i'm going to explain this h to rand here now, the H round, as I explained earlier, is used to generate different numbers each time I run my code, right? So each time I run my code, it will generate a new number for me. Each time I run my code, it's going to generate a new number for me. So by using time bracket zero as an argument to strand, you ensure that a different seed is used each time a program runs, producing a sequence of random numbers. Okay, so that's why I did print F seed, print F random number, so you understand. Now, this, this time zero huh, is going to print different numbers for me different random number for me because that's the work right and this random here because i declared rand here is going to declare just going to generate just one number so i want us to pay attention if i run this code you see that the one the print f with seed will be generating different codes but the print f with random random number which we generate only one code i'm just going to run this code now run so look at the number pay attention to the number we have one six eight five seven nine four nine three two as a seed one eight zero four eight nine three eight three I'm going to run it again. You see, we have another seed. We still have the same random number. You can screenshot it with different phone and check it. Okay, so I want to explain to you now how to get a number within maybe one digit number, two digit number, three digit number, four digit number, five digit number. I'm going to explain it to you now. If you don't want to get a large number, if you want to control the number, the random number that is going to be, you want to generate, let me put it this way. Okay, so remember what I explained earlier about um, getting the last number. If you want to get the last digit of 10, what will I do? I'll divide 10 by 10. If I want to get the last digit of maybe 25, I'll divide 25 by 10. Do you understand? So if I divide 197 by 10, it's giving me something like, hold on, give me 19.7. And 7 becomes the last digit. Now, we're working with the, remind, the remainder, right? So the remain, to get our remainder, we have an operator that we use in C. And that operator is this operator here. So this operator, we divide the rand by whatever. If I want to use 5, if I want to use 10, if I want to use 20, since we want to get the largest number, using 10, right? By 10, right? And it's going to give us the last number there. I don't know if you guys understand, it's going to give us the last digit, the remainder there. If I divide it by 90, what's the remainder there? Point, what is there? That one is going to give me. Now, if I run this code now, it's going to give me 7. Okay. If I run this code again, it's giving me 2. What if I want a code that, is, that will give me 17, that give me 16? All I need to do is, from here, I write plus 10. And I run this code again, 19. 10. 
I'll run this code again. 16. If I write 100. Do you see what's going on here? It will give me the mind that the remainder is going to add it plus 100. Hey, I can run this code now. It will give me something like this. In, and if I use another compiler and run it, it might give me a lesser number. Do you understand? So it depends on the compiler and the phone you're using. Now, you can also use float. It's almost, you can, I, want, I might want to generate a float too, right? But this time around, you're going to typecast it. I'm going to show you an example. So I'm going to explain some of this keyword. You're giving this question now, right? I'm going to explain what's van max here. So van max is a constant defined in s delete header. So it represents the maximum value that can be generated by the rand function in C. It can be less than 32,767, depending on your compiler. Okay, so I want to say something again. If you divide by rand mass, it gives a random float between 0 and 1. That is 0 0.1 or 1 point something, 0 point something, 1 point something. Oh, sorry, I forgot to. Okay, so let me explain this code now. I've been explaining some of the keywords, uh, some of the keywords here. The first thing we did with float rand num. The s rand times 0, which generates a different number first, random number first. The print f. That prints out the random generated float number is right now the random which is the float is equal to float rand we type casted float here so that whatever random number is going to come out is going to be a float that what we type casted if we not type cast it now it's not okay let me, let me remove this type cast here and run this code this is what happened it's not it's going to give us a number no matter how many times i run it until i type cast it here and i run this is what happened here So that's it on today's lecture. I was able to explain how to declare a variable, how to assign a variable. I was able to explain printf and scanf, and also I was able to explain how to generate a random number. If you still want me to explain something or you still have an issue with today's class, kindly drop it on the comment section below. If you want the link to my other classes, check the description or click on my playlist to check some of the videos and see, or click on my videos to check the videos I posted and watch them. They are all educative. And that's it on today's class. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and hit the notification bell. So be the first person to be notified once I drop any video. Once I drop a video, I want to say thank you for listening to this video. I really want to appreciate you all for paying attention, for following, for subscribing to my channel, for sharing this video. I really appreciate you all. God bless you all. Thank you. Have a nice day.